Uh, my name is Hila Cohen. I'm from the United Nations World Food Program, and I'm actually part of our team which, uh, 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 of an innovation accelerator um, that is based in Munich, Germany, but supports uh, innovation in WFP around the world. So, um, so I wanted to share with you today um, our project um, called um, Building Blocks. And I, what I want to share is also our journey with blockchain, because I think it's uh, a journey that many UN agencies are going through. So it's just I wanted to share how uh, we've been uh, going through this uh, journey. Great, so just a few words about WFP, just so you get a bit of context of our work. So WFP is one of the biggest humanitarian actors in the world. On a yearly basis, we feed between 80 and a million, uh, sorry, 80 and 100 million people around the world. Um, we have very strong logistics capabilities. On a daily basis, we manage a fleet of 5,000 trucks. Uh, 20 ships and 70 uh, airplanes moving goods, but also humanitarian workers. Um, but in addition to the end, a major part of our work is actual physical food distribution. But a growing part of our work is something called cash-based transfers. And that is when we actually provide money uh, to beneficiaries around the world. And this is how um, our blockchain story begins with cash-based transfers, and I'll get back to that in a few minutes. Of course, uh, we need to mention the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, for us, the key focus is uh, zero hunger, uh, but we're also uh, looking heavily into uh, partnerships. And this, we could also look, let's say, if you look at the tech side of partnerships, we could see as blockchain as being one of those vehicles for partnerships as part of the SDGs. So um, what, what is the Innovation Accelerator? Um, we opened this Innovation Accelerator two years ago, just about the time uh, when the SDGs were adopted. And what we do is we're taking, uh, let's say, the best practices from the private sector and making them relevant to our UN or um, humanitarian and development work. So we run boot camps, uh, we do innovation challenges, and we give uh, innovation uh, mentorship to the projects that we support. These could be um, internal ideas, but they also could be uh, working with external startups. And that's how, actually, uh, we started our uh, CBT work. Um, and innovation work. Um, we currently support as an accelerator more than 30 uh, projects around the world. Um, we're looking into really diverse topics, some that are really on the cutting edge of technology like uh, self-driving trucks, but we also look at things that help smallholder farmers uh, like growing food without soil, uh, something that's called hydroponics. And this is actually um, how um, our journey started with blockchain because it was actually an uh, one of our finance officers, you wouldn't expect it, you know, someone from finance doing usually accounting and things like that, came to us and applied and said, I want to see how we can use uh, blockchain in cash-based transfers. So that was one of the first, let's say, we were looking into diverse um, um, uh, applications of blockchain, but we started with that one. And what is actually cash-based transfers? Because I think you need to understand, let's say, the topic before we can see how we've used it in blockchain. So, um, if you were in the U.S., you might be aware of something called food stamps. So, let's say that's the most similar parallel uh, uh, I can give you of a cash-based transfer. So, when cash-based transfer is when we don't actually distribute food to someone, but we will give them a paper voucher, or they'll get a credit card, or they'll get it through an SMS, and they can redeem this cash in a local store. So, they'll go to a supermarket or a local uh, market that has our point of sale. They'll pass their credit card. Um, and they will get, they can buy whatever they want for their family. Um, and so that's what we do. So it's, it's instead of actually giving food to people, we're giving them the cash. Um, what it helps us to do, um, uh, cash-based transfers actually gives um, a way for us to empower the local community, but also to empower the beneficiary because they have the choice to decide um, how to feed their families. And this is an interesting statistic, and I, and I think it's always good to show numbers. Um, you would really classically see us, you know, with bags of rice, but cash-based transfers is actually a growing activity um, in WFP operations. So if in 2010 we had around uh, 2 million uh, people uh, receiving uh, cash-based transfers, in six years we're going up to 14 million people. And if you remember the number that I mentioned, that we feed more than 80 million uh, people per year, you can see that there's a growing number of people who receive uh, CBT uh, from the World Food Programme. And cash-based transfers are great, and I've mentioned a, a few benefits, but it has a few challenges, and this is where um, the blockchain uh, thought started relating to cash-based transfers. So if we imagine 
that we are uh, moving cash from our bank account to beneficiaries in the field and we're moving money to more than 14 million people around the world. Think how many bank fees we're paying right now. Of course, we get a discounted rate, but still, it is a lot of money uh, that could be used for other things. There's a financial risk also. Sometimes we work in developing countries or in some of the developing countries we work with, the, 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 vet, uh, the bank could be a bit unstable or if we're working with a mobile provider, they also uh, not be so stable. So we actually might be giving them uh, upfront uh, a lot, millions of dollars, but we could, they could uh, be less stable and that could be risky for us. There's also an issue of privacy because if, for example, we work with a bank, it means that potentially we need to open a bank account for every beneficiary. So if you imagine it could be a Syrian refugee, there could be a bit of danger giving all their private information uh, to a local bank. Um, and also there's a topic of um, reliance on vendor data. So when we uh, infuse the cash and it goes down to our vendors, so let's say remember that person in the supermarket who's getting uh, the, uh, the money through a um, uh, credit card, there could be a problem that um, we don't agree, let's say WFP and the vendor don't agree on the number of transactions or what a certain refugee bought. So that um, we need to do is that some type of reconciliation and that's why uh, one of the things that we need to deal with. And another topic is that diverse UN systems are using uh, diverse uh, platforms and solutions. So um, maybe we can look at solutions that could actually make the UN collaborate on a broader manner. And so this is where the journey started for us. We started um, actually thinking, and diverse teams in our organization looked into this, um, what is blockchain? and how could it be relevant for us. Um, and uh, there was a great introduction in the beginning of the session of uh, the basics of blockchain, and I think it will help to explain the work that we're doing. So this is the how we came to the Building Blocks project, and it is a, a, a solution on blockchain related to our cash-based transfers. And how did this all start? So, of course, everyone, you know, whoever has been interested in tech heard about blockchain in the last few years, about Bitcoin. And, and, and then we started thinking also as an accelerator, but also a number of people in our organization started thinking, what is blockchain? How can we use it? How can we make it relevant for ourselves? And then we actually got um, an application from our, um, our colleague, Human Haddad. He's a finance officer in our headquarters in Rome. And he said, I want to use blockchain for uh, cash-based transfers. And we were like, okay. And uh, we thought, and then he came to one of our boot camps. And what we did was we started doing our homework. So we started talking with many people, startups, uh, some, uh, some academia, some uh, corporate companies, just to start to understand how can we use uh, blockchain for our operations. And now the interesting thought uh, situation was that you get, you talk to three people, you got five opinions. Some people said it's amazing, it's going to change the world. Some people say, hey, it's the UN, we can't use blockchain, it's too dangerous. But it helped us to, we, it was good to hear both sides in order to uh, decide how we want to move forward. And that was in uh, around um, the summer of 2016. And then we said, okay, we, we're getting information, we're collecting it, let's start, let's decide how we test it. So the first test we did was actually with, in January 2017. And two of my colleagues, Human, and then my another colleague of ours, Alex, from the Accelerator, started working with him on this um, um, and so almost in a full-time manner. Um, and they decided to go to Pakistan and actually test the blockchain. So we, um, we just wanted to see how does a, a blockchain technically work, and can we transfer money through a blockchain? And so Alex and Human went with uh, mobile satellite phones to Pakistan and just did a very uh, small-scale test with 100 people. And that went quite well, and that gave us the motivation, uh, and because we tested our, all our assumptions, to take this to a larger phase. And so in 2017, what we actually did was go big. And we, went to, and we did a CBT, so we're transferring the money um, to the beneficiaries through a blockchain to 10,000 refugees in Jordan. And that was when we realized that um, there was a lot of, oh sorry, uh, the wrong laptop. Uh, <laughs> um, and then we realized that we are on the right journey. So how do we use the blockchain? Well, we're actually not using cryptocurrency. Some of you might think, oh, it's money, so you're using uh, Bitcoin. 
We're not using a Bitcoin, we're not using a cryptocurrency, but we are using the Ethereum uh, blockchain backend. So we are doing a transaction on a blockchain, but the beneficiary doesn't feel it. So their day to day is the same. It's just the technology is different. And we're actually using um, a, a, um, a mix of two technologies together. So the beneficiary goes to a supermarket. Um, they identify themselves with their iris scan. Then you can know if it's the right person and if they, are, they have entitlements. And then once they're verified and it's okay, they can, um, they can buy the items that they have selected to buy for their family. And then the money goes through the blockchain from our main bank account to the vendor. So, um, so there is no, so the, the blockchain is the transfer of money, but it's not with a cryptocurrency. And how are we actually saving money? So this is actually, you can see here, I put um, a few examples of how the blockchain looks. By the way, it's all fake numbers, I made them up. But um, I just wanted you to see how uh, a line in the blockchain looks. So you can see who's, when it happened, who's the beneficiary, who's the vendor, what we're actually doing, um, and what's the amount. Um, and, and how are we actually saving money uh, using the blockchain? Because that's one of the key elements we wanted to do with the blockchain. We're saving uh, fees in the local bank account. So um, imagine in the past we probably had to go from our main bank account to go to a Jordanian bank account that would go to the local vendor. So that meant that we opened many local bank accounts in Jordan. But we've created a virtual wallet, so that eliminates the need uh, for the Jordanian bank accounts, and that's where we're saving the money. And, um, and, and, and instead, what we've created is virtual wallets on the blockchain. And the virtual wallet could also, let's say you, it's a virtual ident bank account identity for each uh, beneficiary. And we could all also expand the uses of that in the future. So now this is the amazing part. Um, and I was even, I heard this number just this week and I, I was uh, well, like, wow. Um, so in, we've um, served more than 10,000 beneficiaries and we've done more than a million worth of uh, transactions on a blockchain. So $1 million over a blockchain. Uh, and this is through uh, 100,000 transactions. And um, what is, what's the benefits? And relates to part of the challenges that I mentioned before. So we actually don't have to put any money up front to an uh, entity that could be a, lit, a bit unstable. Um, we are the ones who hold the data of the beneficiaries. Um, we're saving in banking fees, local banking fees, and we have real-time reconciliation. And anyone who's, I don't know if there's any uh, finance people in the room, I think that is the great news th uh, that, you know, that you can do that in real time. And, and the most important thing for the beneficiary, they don't feel any change in their life in, or in their day-to-day -day, uh, operations wherever they are. So um, as uh, Lambert mentioned and Kofa mentioned, there's many um, applications for blockchain. Um, and we're also thinking about it. And of course there's other teams uh, in our organization looking into blockchain. But, um, and blockchain could be a platform for more collaboration within the UN. Uh, because there will be a shared truth. As, it's, as it was mentioned, you can't delete lines from the blockchain. So you, you create this uh, platform of trust. And I think that's like something important that, uh, you know, as, as we are all in this room, we should take that into account. But um, there's many other um, uh, ways that we can use the, the blockchain. Uh, for us, let's say it could be uh, quite relevant is the topic of supply chain. But, you know, you could look into this for help. For finance, you can have a system that verifies information in a, in a trustworthy manner. So, uh, what's the next steps for us? Um, so, we're continuing uh, to uh, grow uh, with blockchain. We a want to expand our operations in Jordan itself. We also are looking into going into other countries around the world. Uh, but also, we want to start working with other UN agencies, and we're already in touch with a part of the Mercy Corps. Uh, UNRWA with UNDP, I'm sure there's others as well, um, but it's, it's really, it's, it's a great opportunity uh, for the UN agencies to collaborate together. Um, so this is us, um, this is actually a picture with my colleagues Alex and Human when they were doing their pilot um, in Pakistan uh, in January. And of course if you want more information, you want to contact us to see how we're, uh, what we've done or uh, how we can work together, uh, feel free to reach out to us. Um, so that's the end for me, and again, I want to thank OICT for inviting us to participate in this day. Thanks so much.